It's that time of the year again where there's a load of fussing and fawning about a new iteration of the iPhone. And this is the iPhone 11 Pro in midnight green. Hence why I'm dressed up in a bit of a green today. Look at that. It's like camouflage. You can barely see the phone there. Right, anyway, but how much fussing and how much fawning is in this video? Don't know. i just start the video. But let's find out. It's a smartphone, it does lots of smart stuff, but all I care about are those tiny bits of glass that jut out on the back of the phone and what's underneath them, the camera bits. So what is new with the iPhone 11 Pro? Well, we've got three lenses here, three different focal lengths, three sensors, three times 12 megapixels, right here. There's three of them, so they're arranged in a triangle. Not entirely sure if I'm keen on the way that looks, but you know, some people might like that kind of thing. Optometrists? Don't know why exactly they're arranged in a triangle, possibly to keep them equidistant from each other. Who knows? So with that trio of lenses, we have got a tele lens, tele lens, 52mm f2 OIS lens. Then we've got a 26mm f1.8, that's your standard. Then the new one is a 13mm equivalent, f2.4. No optical stabilization. That's that's really wide. That's like in your face kind of wide. Even if you don't want to take a selfie, you'll probably end up taking a selfie. Look, I'm in the shot. You know, if it's not your fingers that's going to be getting in the shot, it'll be your shadows because 120 degree angle view. Look, my, my fingers, my, I've got both of them there. I've got both my finger and my shadow in the shot. I mean, my, my fingers just here, I can see in the shot. 13 millimeter, I fear might be just a stretch too wide for some. If I was to buy a trio of lenses for a DSLR or mirrorless camera, I'd pick 50mm, then 28mm, nice compliment. And after that, maybe 21, maybe 18mm. 13 is just a bit too wide. It's a bit too extreme. It exaggerates lines, it exaggerates shapes and sizes. Faces don't look too good in a wide that wide. Look, standard lens, face, fine. Ultra wide, look at what it did to me. On the other hand, if you're having something wider, why not have it wildly wider? Have it wiki wild west wider. If you're gonna go wide, why not go the whole hog, right? And considering it's this wide, it performs well enough. There's distortion, but not complex and can be fixed in post. It's not super sharp, but it's fun getting this field of view on a phone. And you can always zoom in a bit if that's too wide for you, and it zooms mostly smoothly through the range. That's quite impressive considering each lens has a different max aperture, so it'll probably be a different exposure for each different lens. So it has to blend that in so it doesn't look shit. Mostly smooth, I said, mostly. In certain lighting, you can notice the shift in color change, which pops when you zoom into the next focal length. There's parallax error too, more no spawn close up subjects, but that is because each lens is in a different position, obviously. Processing and software can't change that. Talking about processing, presumably it takes a lot of processing power to make that zoom smooth because although in 4K 24 and 30p you can zoom through the entire range, in 4K 60p you can't. It's limited to going from one focal length to the next one up and a little bit longer. You know, I think this new wide lens makes it useful for vloggers. Even without IS, it looks pretty stable to me. But with an ultra wide line, there's 13 millimeters. I don't think it's as important to have optical stabilization or any stabilization. And I think this would do a pretty good job of vlogging because it's so wide, it's gonna get everything in. One thing that bugs the shit out of me is the frame rates. After all these years, still only 24, 30, and 60 FPS for 4K. What about 25 FPS or 50 FPS? But anyway, 4K video still looks good with nice, punchy, contrasty colours. Neutral looking skin colours, stabilisation, good like before, and that 1200 nits HDR screen is lush. It's an HDR screen that goes up to 1200 nits, beneficial when you view HDR content, but even then I'm not filming HDR, and to see the benefit of an HDR screen, you have to have one in front of you, right? In which case, there's no point showing you the benefit of it. Now this new feature I like is just press down the shutter button and hold and it takes video. It's a bit like IG, you hold it down and when you release that stops the video. Alternatively you can just swipe to the right after you hold the button and that locks in place and then you stop recording by pressing the stop button again. You can also swipe to the left, that's the burst mode, although this is a really boring burst so let's stop that. Now in the settings here we can select to capture stuff outside of the frame so when you're using the telly or the standard Basically, it captures stuff you see in the shadowy bits there. Technically, you get those dark bits on the side, plus a bit more on the top and the bottom. I mean, I guess that's to correct any kind of shit composition, really. 
Oh, interestingly, when I put stuff close to the camera, the shadowy bits disappear. Don't know exactly why they did it. Um, maybe they think with ultra wide you don't want to put subjects too close to the camera. Quite the contrary for me. With an ultra wide, I want to fill the frame with stuff. So stop switching off the wide preview bits when I'm going close up to the subject, maybe, yeah? I mean, with an ultra wide like this, with 13 millimeters, you need to get really close. Really, really, really close. Nah, not close enough. Better, but ideally you need to be so close you're joining in on her phone conversation. Having more room does mean you can crop more to get your desired pick, but 12 megapixels doesn't give you much room to play with. You know, I like the iPhone. I've always liked shooting street photography with the iPhone because it's so quick. And of course the 11 Pro is pretty damn quick. I don't think it's actually any faster than a 10 to focus, but that doesn't mean it's not snappy and it's really snappy. Just boom. Would you take a look at that? It's brilliant. The autofocus doesn't seem to be any quicker than my 10 and detects faces the same even when your subject is moving around like a twat. I didn't think it would be useful to capture stuff outside the phone, but I did take a shot where I just quickly got my phone out of pocket, but I didn't have time to switch it to wide angle because it was in a tight space. I mean, it will be fine using this shot with the heads cropped off, but when you've got extra stuff captured, You've got more creative control. You can get a shot which you didn't think you got. And what else? It has a night mode which essentially takes a longer exposure, blends it, some Hogwarts shit happens and you get cleaner, punchier looking shot, perhaps aided by the use of a lower ISO in the longer exposure. Although the night mode tends to literally work at night, even though it would be nice to have the ability to shoot a cleaner image in golden hour, blue hour, whatever colour hour. Night mode is a bit of a pedantic bugger. 4K preview in live view, self-explanatory, but it's all about that third lens and how it's been integrated into the iPhone. It's so wide, but at least you can see what that third lens actually does then and overcoming the different positioning of the lenses when zooming, well, the 11 Pro probably has one of the best transitioning through the zoom range. Has it improved the iPhone for photography? Well, since the last iteration, I'll definitely say it is a notch above. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Wow, we've got matching car here. Look. I've blended into the background here. I'm over here, by the way. 